please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the first scripture reading that Pastor Adi just read for you. I share with you today at verse 26. Peter is speaking and Peter says, My heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh will also dwell in hope. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Have you ever had to deliver bad news to someone? No one likes to hear bad news. That's because people just don't want to hear bad news. Years ago, the former president, Ronald Reagan, he was known as a great communicator. That's because he had a great way of expressing ideas that inspired people. Now, President Reagan, he rarely ever shared bad news with the people. In all of his news conferences, he always shared good news. If there was any bad news ever to report, he always had the State Department knew that. And this way, President Reagan was always to keep his image as a positive leader. Well, nobody likes to hear bad news. And that's why it's so interesting in this word of God before us today, when Peter is, is making a speech, Peter's speech has bad news in it. It has bad news. Now, Peter had a lot of courage to be able to share this bad news because think about it. Peter, not long before this, had denied he even knew who Jesus was. And then at the crucifixion of Jesus, Peter was nowhere to be found. He wasn't there. He was more concerned about saving his own life than he was about following Jesus. So it's kind of surprising why he's even willing to make this speech, let alone to share bad news. Yet here on this particular day, when the city of Jerusalem was filled with people from every nation in the world, Peter stands up and he gives this amazing speech. Look at what he said. He said, Jesus was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to a cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to stop him. Peter's message here does have some bad news in it. But did you also catch his message is also filled with hope. There's a lot of hope in this message too. Look at what Peter says here. He says that this was all part of God's deliberate plan. God planned from the very beginning of this world that he was going to send his son Jesus to give up his life in a death on a cross for all human beings and then rise from the dead so he could destroy the power of death so that he could offer hope of eternal life in heaven for all people. You see, eternal life was always part of God's plan. Heaven was always part of God's plan, wasn't it? The death of Jesus, done by these wicked people, couldn't even stop this. And to prove that the message was true, Peter quoted what King David had said many years before to these people. He said this about the future promised Messiah. Jesus of Nazareth, whom the Jews had put to death, would rise from the dead to become the savior of all people from sin and death. Wow. Peter's message, even though it did have bad news in it, was also filled with good news. First of all, today we see that the truth of the resurrection fills us with confidence for the future. Peter and his disciples, they had just seen Jesus ascend into heaven. Jesus wasn't with them anymore. He had left them behind. They didn't have a leader now. 
They really didn't know exactly what their plan was going to be. And they still were in danger of being persecuted by the religious leaders and by the Romans in their day. But they were not living in fear anymore, were they? Because now they had God's plan for all people. You see, they had seen the resurrected Jesus. And that gave them confidence for the future. We have that same confidence for the future here today, don't we? Because Jesus isn't dead. Jesus is alive. We're not following a dead Savior, but we're following an alive Savior. And this living Savior has overcome death for us. And that gives to you and me the confidence that we're one day going to be with Jesus forever and ever in heaven. And so that's how we can live in confidence today. Jesus has overcome death, and he has given us the hope of eternal life with him in heaven. Secondly, today, this truth of the resurrection gives us joy for the present. You know, Peter here, he talks about two kinds of joy, doesn't he? First of all, he says, my heart is glad. Now, this Greek phrase refers to having a cheerful attitude because of an inner triumph. That's great, isn't it? We can have a cheerful attitude today because we know about the triumph of Jesus over death. The second type of joy that Peter describes today is my tongue rejoices. Now this Greek phrase literally means to jump for joy. It's the kind of joy that makes a choice, doesn't it? I mean, we can jump for joy because Jesus has overcome the fear of death for us. This fear of death takes away any hope that we have in our lives. I mean, if all you're going to do is live on this earth and die, and that's it, it takes away any hope. It takes away any joy. I mean, if all it was was just live on this earth and that's it, how hopeless it would be. But it's not hopeless anymore because of Jesus. There's a story about a woman from Indiana who volunteered to go to help refugees in El Salvador, El Salvador. Now, this woman from Indiana, she saw all the refugees and their poverty, and she saw their lives seemed hopeless, and she was very sad. She never smiled. One day, a refugee woman came to her and asked her why she was always so sad, why she never smiled. And the woman from Indiana said, well, just look. Look at all the refugees. Look at, look at their poverty. And this refugee woman said to her, you know, whenever we have to move our camp, we always start three committees. We have a construction committee, we have an education committee, and we have a joy committee. And the purpose of the joy committee is to help us to see good at the moment and to be able to look forward to a bright future. Wow. You know, you have a joy committee around you every week when you come here to worship like you are today. You have a joy committee that you can celebrate with every week. You get to celebrate your family and your friends. You get to celebrate that you have a home to live in and that you have this church to be able to worship in each week. You get to celebrate that you have forgiveness for all of your sins. You get to celebrate each week that you're going to have eternal life in heaven one day. All of this you get to celebrate every week because you're in a joy committee. Wow. Now, we help each other 
to live in this hope each week, don't we? We help each other to have joy right now in the present. Thirdly today, this truth of the resurrection motivates us now to live in hope. The word of God today says that we can rest in hope. That Greek phrase literally means to live and to dwell in hope. This phrase says that because we know that our Messiah Jesus lives, we can live in hope. You may remember a man named Terry Waite. Terry is a British man who worked years ago for the Church of England. Now, his job was to negotiate the release of British hostages who were taken captive by hostile governments. In 1987, Terry was asked to go to negotiate the release of hostages in the country of Lebanon. He went over there, and while he was trying to negotiate their release, he too was captured. He became a hostage. He was a hostage for five years. He was in solitary confinement during those years. He was beaten and barely fed. He almost died. What kept him going was praying to God every day. Terry was asked after he was released how he survived that terrible ordeal. And Terry said, if you have faith that you will not be destroyed, you will find that you can live in hope, not just for this life, but for the life to come. If you have faith and trust in Jesus, you too can live in hope. That's the message that Peter gave to those people in the city of Jerusalem years ago. That's the message that Peter has for you and me here today. That's the truth of the resurrection of Jesus. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we have confidence for the future. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we have joy in our present. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we can live a life of hope. That's the truth. That we can celebrate every week of our lives. And so I pray that God gives you this confidence and this joy and this hope every day of your life. Amen. Let's now rise as we join together in the next song of praise. <laughs>